Okay, hi, welcome to the live session. It is uh, June 23rd. All right, so Michelle, I'll start with you. Um, so here, this is your previous version, and I see that you uh, you said you brightened things up in general and did some materials adjustments. What, what did you change in the materials? Oh, well, when I was trying to rebuild my uh, beauty path, I realized that my diffuse and my specular passes were incomplete. Mm -hmm. uh, what I, I think what was the problem was that metalness and roughness weren't playing nicely together. Uh -huh. So I had to make adjustments to that. Okay. Um, All right, and then you said you brightened things. What did you, what, what, what uh, exactly did you brighten? Uh, I tried to make the caustics more obvious instead of just making it dimmer. I though I think I might have over did the brightness on the boat, but I think I added more. I think I did brighten up the mermaid for sure. Although I do kind of prefer how her how the light hits her arm in the older version. But mm -hmm. yeah, I I mostly tried to recreate. <laughs> what I had before the change, but oh, yeah, you lost yeah. some work, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can tell that the specularity on the boy for sure feels like it's less shiny in a way. I, I, I do feel like I'm looking at this now and I feel like I may have overdone it and maybe a middle ground between my previous version and this version would probably be the sweet spot. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I think the brightening overall um, is is good. And yeah, I mean, I agree with you about her shoulder, um, but the intensity is better. Mm. Um, the boy in his face, he's kind of lost some shape. Yeah. You know, he, he's getting a little cartoony, but but uh, I mean, overall, having the whole scene be a little brighter, I think, is is uh, is helping. I mean, I don't, I don't think this is that far off. I, I think what needs to happen really is, um, I think you really, I don't know how much you're relying on the key in the sky to, to do all this. Are, are there other, at one point you had a whole bunch of fills, like too many fills. Um, are there sort of spot bounce lights as well or? Oh yeah, I, I, I went back to having a lot of fills. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, there's at least on the mermaid herself, since the key doesn't really hit her, I had to pick another additional key to hit her shoulder because otherwise it really does, the angle that I had it, it really doesn't really hit her. So I picked some of that and um, I couldn't, uh, past the point of, but um, I couldn't, but after a certain point with the um, environment light, it overexposes the water a lot. So I had to bake some bounce lights with other fills as well, mm -hmm. instead of relying too much on the GI because it really does blow out the entire water surface. So right. there are more lights placed around the boy and the mermaid just to brighten up them overall. Okay. Um, but for both of the characters, they basically have, I would say, two to three lights each just devoted to them. Mm -hmm. So including my C and the environment light, I would say there's maybe 12 lights in the scene. I don't know if that's too much or- No, it's right. fine. It's, what, it's whatever you need, really. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about the count or anything. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I, I think like overall, the, the levels are good but they do feel a little flat and i think but i think the way to recover all this is to is to really add a lot more spot bounce as if there's there's you know even more um uh light bouncing off the water and hitting them but but i it, it does need to be directed you know like mm -hmm. the areas that are kind of dark and flat now are like shoot You know, her, her face, his face, mostly. 
I mean, that, those are the, the spots that you really need to see the most. Mm. So, you know, if, if you can get, you know, like some, some bounces in, in these areas that are, um, you know, feel like they're coming off the water, but they're getting the, the, the surfaces on, on these guys that are sort of facing, you know, the, the downward surfaces, the ones that are facing the water. That's going to help you a lot. It's a, I did a paint over, and I'll show that to you in a second. It's, it, okay. this, this doesn't really, uh, oops, doesn't, uh, but you know, I, I'm just graphically doing this now. But um, you know, sort of, the, sort of the parts that where where light would be bouncing back up. And you know it, it can be kind of from everywhere too, but but the the thing about it is what will make it nice, like what what will allow this relatively flat, you know, the, their faces, the colors on their faces being relatively flat to work is if there's a sense of of uh, you know pretty strong bounce light shaping them. Use the bounce, you know, both as spec and diffuse to 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 shape them. All right, so let me, let me show you the paint over that I did for this. So, you know, this kind of thing going on on her face where you're getting, you know, subtle underlighting. It's, yeah, it's basically underlighting. You can shape them that way and that, that, that will make them feel like they're in a sunny um, environment. You see what's happening? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think this goes back to the, the, the feel you were trying to get with this, um, this, this project, you know, not, not uh, dark, not stunt lighting, just, um, you know, no, like sun in the middle of, of the composition that's, that's casting huge shadows and stuff, but, but a, a very bright ambient scene that's lighting them. But you know, in this kind of environment, you'd get a, a lot of bounce. Like bounce is a surprisingly big contributor to really any scene. Like uh, it, once once you start looking for it, just out in the world, you'll you really notice how much more bounce there is than you think. And then, especially in an environment like this, you know, where mm -hmm. it's the 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 surface of the water is a, a gigantic shiny bounce card. So, you know, I, I'm doing it on the bottom of the boat as well, more, and then like inside his hat, which is kind of like the underside of the, the canopies of the speedboat that we, speedboats that we looked at in the reference before. Um, but yeah, like all, all, like the underside of her brow and the, and the, uh, like the, around her nostrils, the, the, the parts of her body that are actually facing down. Those are the ones that are going to get underlit um, with some, you know, greenish blue sort of, sort of tealish turquoise light, which will really uh, help things come to life. Okay. And then also, you know, specular wise, like um, you know, her, it, I, I put a little like spec on her on her arms, on top of his, like the areas that are getting hit by sun, like on his nose, um, you know, more, more in her hair and stuff um, that'll, that'll help it feel a little brighter as well, you know, the top, the top of this uh, pole. Because, you know, this, this, this strong sunlight, you're going to be getting that a little bit. I think what you have feels a, a little bit flat, like like this arm here, doesn't feel like it's getting a lot of specular response. And, mm -hmm. and even his, that feels more like the, the, the diffuse getting blown out than it picking up spec. So in this case, it would be actually okay to do a lot of little tiny targeted lights. Oh, it's always okay. 
So I, I thought it was just like you wanted to, but don't overdo it just because it also adds to your time and it's so easy to overdo. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, the thing is, it's like it, in a perfect world, <laughs> you could you could just turn the, the sun on and the sky on and it would do its thing. Mm. But, but even still, actually, what it would do is it, it, it with a perfect renderer and the amount, all the time you needed and all the bounces you needed, it would make it look like the real world, which isn't exactly what you want in a composed image, you know, in a movie. There's always a level of exaggeration there. So, so um, yeah, as a base, I did want you to go back and sort of strip things down so that you could see what was happening. But then once you get there, and I think, you know, sorry, I lost my cursor here. Okay. Um, what was going on? I think I crashed. Uh, um, well, I can still hear you and I can still see your screen. Okay, I got it back. Um, so, I mean, this uh well, i can't remember what i was getting at <laughs> like this is a this is a pretty good start like with with the, those kind of constraints you know keeping it simple but now it's time to go in and add the little details that that bring it to life and you know in in a production environment that's exactly what you would do you try to make um you know a, a base rig that will work for different shots and different people but then once you get into shot by shot lighting, then it's always a matter of, of bringing in whatever you need to make the things read that need to read and for the, for the tone to be right. So, I mean, don't worry about that kind of thing as far as adding more stuff. But, but what, what is important in this case is that you do it very locally. Like don't make those real, like gigantic lights, those are like the stuff that's happening on her face. I mean, if you can, if you can get it to work with all this to work with one light, terrific. But I kind of doubt it. You're gonna have to go in there and, and sort of really angle things in, unfortunately, to, to, to make it work. And probably, you know, one set for her and another set for him. And that could be an extra, you know, two, three lights that are just uh, bounces. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, don't, I mean, don't be afraid to add more stuff. It's just when it gets to be, you know, like so many lights that you're not quite sure what's happening anymore and they're all overlapping, then you get a problem because then you've lost control. So if your base is simple and it's doing, you know, at least half, half the work, hopefully even more, like if you get it to be doing three quarters of the heavy lifting, then the detail work, um, you know, as long as you can keep it under control, um, you know, add, add what you need, where you need it. Okay? Yeah. All right, cool. I will send you this paint over as well. Um, Angela's not here, but we'll just go to hers real fast. Okay, so Angela, you, this is where you were last week. And you turn those uh, lights into volumetrics, and I, I think that helps a lot. I mean, when this is this is the reference, you know, this where it's it's just a pure light versus this looks much more like that. And you know, I mean, I think it's it. Uh, hopefully, you, you're starting to feel the the power of volumetrics and atmosphere and you know atmosphere and volumetrics are basically the same thing they're they're implemented in different ways but it's it's the idea uh, that there are you know there's stuff in the air there's there's part particulate in the air whether it's dust or you know tiny little motes of whatever or more likely uh, water vapor you know it's just moisture it's humidity and um, that that tends to build up in depth. So the further something, further away something is, the more of that will build up and start to scatter light and and um, occlude detail, which is how you get the nice um, atmospheric perspective and, and uh, diminution of detail. 
And you know, in in a case like this, when you're when you add the volumetrics to to a light to, to these cylindrical lights, it's it's sort of faking it locally so that um, you know it, it's making it seem like the area around the light has more of this particulate stuff that that is is getting glowed up. But I mean, I can tell by the amount of atmo you I mean volumetrics you have in here, it's affecting. Um, all the all the stuff around is not just around the light. It's it's spreading out quite a bit, and um, you know affecting the the darkness of these things. And e even that that uh, the blue fill light that we had is is filling with more of the green. Uh, I assume that's what's happening here, which which looks great too. And and it feels more like your source. You know where there's a hint of of, of ambient fill, um, but. But because of the volumetrics and the scattering of of the source light, that's really sort of wrapping um, more of the the color into the into the scene. So I mean, I think this is great. This is really successful. Um, I hope you learned something from this. And you know, if you get into a more of a landscape or or even a bigger room, uh, definitely experiment with um, atmosphere in there and and see what that does as well. But um, Good job, and I think you know it's time for you to move on to the next exercise. All right, Michelle, back to you. Um, so this is tell me about what 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 you did here because this has changed. Even the key only has changed quite a bit since where you were. Last um, week. So uh, my uh, I meant my environment light actually was more warm tone. Mm -hmm. So I did change it back to something that was a bit more neutral, more blue. Okay. I also increased it just to see. Um, there was a light pointed at the right corner of mm -hmm. the room that I just completely removed. And I just wanted to use the um, environment light to just cast light on that. Mm -hmm. I didn't met my, I don't know. I think it's just the uh, layout of the scene itself. I still don't get as much light as I wanted from outside the window coming in that mm -hmm. I ended up adding a uh, adding a um, spot uh, point light at the back of the room, which mm -hmm. is also the source of light that is um, that I used for the uh, atmospheric dust. But so uh, that's what's doing that all this. Oh, sorry. Is that what's lighting this area up and and uh, sort of fogging it out? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I wasn't getting the kind I I wasn't getting uh, the volume metrics from my my environment light sadly, so I resorted to using the uh, the existing spotlight uh, the existing point light that I had at the back of the room. That's why it's brighter on mm -hmm. the left than it is on the right. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, those are the two major light changes that I did. I did add a. Uh, another light behind the girl just to light her back some more. Mm -hmm. So, because uh, you want to, yeah, you, last time your feedback was that they seemed kind of disjointed, yeah. especially the girl was very dark. Yeah, very dark. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. not sure about her brightness level now because now it does seem like she seems almost too bright for the scene itself. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I think so a little bit. Um, well, I mean, the, the 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 robot reads much much better, right? And I think that's probably the most important thing. I didn't even realize that he, he seems to have this little smile on his face because we couldn't see that before, right? So I, I think you know uh, that that's that's helping a lot. I I got a question for you though. Like, did you increase the intensity of the key as well, or just the Sort of the sky dome back there, uh, or or is this all happening due to an HDRI or? Uh, I don't think I really changed all that much in the key. At least I didn't. I didn't re-render the volumetrics at all. Mm -hmm. it, if I did change it in, if I did change the key, it was just in the beauty render. I did change the um, soft edge, but I can't remember if I increased the intensity. Yeah, I, I would try to increase the intensity of the key because this doesn't look as quite as bright as I would 
expect necessarily. And, you know, if this is all working with, with global illumination, if it's brighter, it's going to kick more light up as well, uh, which I think will help you. And then maybe you can bring down this, this fill light a little bit. Um, I mean, the, the, this side, the levels feel better here than they, than they did before because it was, it was really kind of, I guess it wasn't that much brighter. Uh, yeah, it is. It's contrastier and brighter. You know, the contrast level's down, which helps. I guess that's a lot of that's fog. But yeah, without without the the dust, it's just darker, and I think it's sitting better, and it's slightly cooler. I mean, I personally would prefer it if it were a little cooler still. And and also, you know, this this key maybe it shouldn't just be brighter. It should be a little yellower because mm. it's, it's everything still feels very red. You know, and that might be hurting your your blue fills or your your sky, like your your. Um, you said you neutralized your um, your formerly warm environment light back there, but I try going actually, you know, blue with some saturation and see what it does. So uh... you know, like not as not as blue as this but well you know what <laughs> try it see what it does like this kind of this level blue sort of cyan um, my key should be overall more warm the key should be should be warm in the sense that it should be a little bit yellow or orange it, it feels mm -hmm. very red right now or something feels very red maybe i can't tell if the key is actually really neutral like almost white and there's something else extremely like overly warm going on. Maybe that's the case because like, you know, this is, unless this, the material is actually that, that brown and not even just brown, it's like a really reddish brown, you know, um, that feels a little off to me. I can go through my lights one by one and see what color I have. Okay. But yeah, I mean, the once once you once you get that Atmo in there, it is helping the overall um, contrast levels and stuff here. But it definitely feels bright. Like I, my eye is still going here too much. Mm. So so it is better with the uh, with the atmosphere spreading to the whole room then. Yeah, I think so. You know, I mean, it, there would be some there. I, it's still you want this area to feel you know the most significant and brightest and and maybe your key needs to do a little bit more of this which would rim her a little bit better and then maybe sneak a, a few um volumetric rays in there and, and light the floor up a little bit um i mean are you using a directional light is this like a, an actual parallel race thing or are you cheating it a little bit uh i just have an area light pointed through the window uh -huh. and it's just at as just environment yeah and well, I maybe think you I can lower, spread it a little bit spread. so that it, it does more more of this yeah i did i think i have it at zero spread just so i get those lines when i was trying to render okay um, yeah, I mean, she does like she does feel a little overfilled here, mm. um, but but still, you know, the these guys are are reading better together, certainly than they used to, because I mean, in this one, he's he's like mixing into the the volumetrics and kind of the room even. He's, he's less than the room, but. Um, he's, he's just disappearing and she's jumping out way too much. So, you know, now oops, that's, that's a much, it's closer. I think you still need to, you know, um, this is still really dark. <laughs> just need to lighten this up a little bit, but also, you know, she, she is getting a little too much light here. And and kind of again similarly to your um, uh, boat scene. I mean, I think oops. 
I think that uh, you know you could you could you could use more bounce off off this extremely hot um, sunbeam coming in and uh, bounce up into these guys. You know, like like this would get a little bit of bounce up on it. Things like that would, would start to happen. And then um, you know that that might solve some of the darkness problem, or you might just need to, you know, I mean, ideally there to be some of this, you know, dusty stuff is happening here, whether it's happening via the, the volumetrics from your key, or you just sort of add it in that area. Because we, regardless of how it happens, just compositionally, you really kind of need to get her to be not quite as uh, contrasty. Mm. But but overall, it's working better. You know, I think all the parts are starting to come together better. All right. So you want to try that? Something like that? Sure. The next yeah. time. Okay. Cool. Um, you got any other questions? Because otherwise, I think we're it's, it's pretty much it. Um, not relevant to my scene, but I was thinking of previous feedback where you said stuff like, oh, uh, the white shirt lens uh, caught, uh, is um, standing out too much and you can choose the material, uh, choose the color. Oh, I'm the sorry, the, the, the what? Oh, no, you're giving a, a feedback to another student's piece uh -huh. Uh -huh. where you uh, said that maybe change the color of the shirt. And oh, I was yeah, right. wondering in a production, like how does that happen do you just do you talk to the texture artist and they can do that or you're um, kind of locked into whatever they give you it, it depends you know i mean usually if it if it's a significant character then the, all that stuff has been vetted already and and all, you know their their costumes and whatever have their reasons for their color them to be whatever color so it's yeah it's unlikely if it's a minor character a lot of times yeah we'll, we'll switch things around just to make the composition work better. And, you know, with the agreement of the art director and the director. Um, but that's a lot of times that, that is a very easy way to, to uh, you know, change the hierarchy of the frame. Um, but it really only works <laughs> in certain cases. But still, like, even if it were a white shirt and the guy's always wearing a white shirt, you can always dim it a little bit, you know? Um, in order for, say, his white hair to read better. And that that, that usually will happen anyway. Like the, the art director would want that, like the face to read clearer than the shirt. And, and uh, probably you wouldn't have that conflict because it would have been designed out in the first place. Mm. I was just curious about that. Thanks. Yep. All right. Well, um, thanks for coming. And... Uh, See you. Well, you were asking if we were going to do it on Sunday. I guess we should try Sunday and then maybe we'll just do Sunday, Wednesday next week. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot, Michelle. Bye bye. Have a good night. Bye. You too.